Welcome back to the Fox Robin Show. Uh, this is episode two of uh, two episodes on uh, the subject is, do you remember these defunct restaurants? <laughs> so we're, we're dealing with uh, a junkyard of, of uh, restaurants. Now, some of them are semi-defunct in that there are and, still a few locations. Uh, but, yeah. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna ask the coach about this as a, uh, as a uh, there are differences, but there are also great similarities, you know, going on. That's here. why they failed. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. I'm. Uh, this is the Fox Robbins Business Show. <coughs> Everything you ever needed to know about entrepreneurship and small business. Even stuff you didn't want to know. And stuff you didn't want to know or didn't. <laughs> uh, We're afraid to face. <laughs> afraid. <laughs> I'm uh, Bill Fox, the co-host. The uh, the other co-host though is uh, somebody who is uh, recognized and out on the street as stimulating. And he's also thermogenic and scintillating. He is <laughs> Coach Robbins. Scintillating, I like that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Coach, this is episode two on, yep. uh, on de uh, defunct restaurant chains. And right. uh, I was just saying uh, in the opening that when in episode number one, you, re you remarked on differences differences in the story right. of some of these chains, but there's also a lot of similarity. Well, they, yeah, there's two or three reasons they're failing, and we'll go over it in this show too, but I went over some of the major reasons. But it, it's usually very similar uh, paths that they follow to disaster. Well, let's start off. <clears throat> uh, we ended up with uh, uh, Ponderosa right. and Bonanza Steakhouses, yep. and so I'm going to start you off on, on a chain known as Charlie Brown's Steakhouse. Another steakhouse, yet another steakhouse. Uh, yet another steakhouse, right, you know, and again, Charlie Brown being, I'm sure they had to pay, what's his name, uh, royalties for using the name if he wasn't involved Who's the, with uh, the, uh, the cartoonist. Cartoonist. Yeah, you know, Schultz? Schultz. Schultz. Yeah, Schultz, yeah. yeah. Good. I'm sure they had to pay him for to use the brand identity because, yeah. I mean, this is this is the ultimate of branding, right? When you use Charlie Brown, who wasn't a cook, probably wouldn't be a very good cook, right? But you use the name Charlie Brown, which was very popular back in the 60s. But I don't know 70s. what it means, you know, when the uh, restaurant. Again, it, was, it grew This grew up out of, out of New, in New Jersey yeah. back in the 80s and 90s. There is always somebody that's willing to buy, you know, a chain thinking, oh, this is something that's not here and therefore I can buy this, this, this franchise and I'm going to make a success. Yeah. And nine times out of ten they fail because they don't get the support they need, they don't do the marketing, they don't create the broad brand identity. I mean, you want to open a Charlie Brown Steakhouse someplace where there's not one? Really? I mean, Charlie Brown's also history, you know, yeah. as far as cartoons go. Yeah. You know, there, there's history. So you know, if you want to open a Simpsons Steakhouse, I guess maybe that might work, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> but opening another Charlie Brown Steakhouse today is like opening a Flintstones Steakhouse. You know, really? <laughs> uh, this one, I'm not familiar with this one. This is Noggles, N-A-U-G-L-E-S, -N -A Noggles. Uh, yeah. uh, had a 25-year run of success from uh, 1970 to 1995. Mexican. Yeah. It's Mexican uh, fast food. Yeah, well, Mexicans are very popular fast food, but the one thing I liked about what this... These, these people had a mission statement, which I happen to like, or a motto, a tagline that says, prepare food fresh, serve customers fast, yeah. keep the place clean. I mean, just stating it, I would imagine that all fast food restaurants want to prepare fresh food and serve it fast and keep yeah. the place clean. I know McDonald's does, yeah. but they actually stated it. And for a while, that became something. You know, they, they built up 225 locations, right? But... Ten years later, they closed their doors because of a lack of support by the franchisor. Yeah. The franchisor comes up with a good idea, and <clears throat> they sell the franchises to suspecting, uh, you know, franchisees. They drain the thing of cash for 10 or 15, 20 years, and then they let the thing go and retire to uh, Mexico. I was <laughs> suspicious about the 
personally, yeah. I was suspicious about the name Noggles. I mean, I, don't I have know no idea what, what it means. I uh, mean, maybe that was. Uh, it's hard to. It, to me, it would be very difficult to build a brand identity around something called Noggles. Now, here's Doesn't what I'm going to try you out on, <clears throat> which is, I think, an attempt to be cl uh, clever. Yeah. It's called Druthers. Yeah, I Druther this burger. Yeah. Say, I. Uh, yeah, they said uh, Druther. Uh, <clears throat> also, AKA, also known as Burger Queen. Right. <laughs> Uh, 1963, 1981, based in Louisville, uh, from uh, Cedar, Kentucky. Uh, burgers, fried chicken. There was a mascot called <laughs> Queen, Queenie B. And also a, a character, sort of a uh, Ronald McDonald character, Andy Dandy Tail, or whatever, targeted kids. It sounds like a, a ripoff on the uh, Ronald, Ronald It's McDonald. just another me too, fast come, fast go. I mean, Druthers, Burger Queen. They had burgers. They had Kentucky. They had fried chicken. They had Queenie B. They had Andy Dandy Tail, you know, targeted at kids. They're just copying what? It's just another me too group. And for a while, they probably were successful. Again, probably 20, 10, 20 years. As a matter of fact, they started in Louisville, Kentucky, which is, I think, where mm. Kentucky Fried Chicken started. Yeah. So they were just you know, riding along the coattails of that company, but they confused the heck out of the brand by coming up with so many names. Who are they? McDonald's has always been McDonald's. It was never Crocs. Ray Kroc. Yeah. He, he started with McDonald's. He, he stuck with McDonald's, and McDonald's stayed as the, the brand. Right. McDonald's used to be a farm, E-I-E-I-O, but today when you say <laughs> McDonald's to people, it ain't old McDonald's farm. It's McDonald's. They make hamburgers. So it's very clear what their brand is. Speaking of that, <clears throat> All the hamburgers, another one, another one uh, called Henry's. I yep. don't know. Uh, this was a was this regional? I've I've never heard of Henry's until we started doing the research here. You know, and again, it was uh, somebody who decided to mimic the success of the McDonald's brand. Well, it says they were actually ahead of McDonald's for a while back in their day, back in the early '60s. There were over 200 of these things, yep. these things called Henry's, yep. and they were out in, out in front of McDonald's. Yeah, they were for a while. Got a head start to McDonald's. But Darwin, Darwin was right. Darwin <laughs> did not say survival of the fittest. I have no idea why people say, he said survival of the most adaptable. Yeah. Because you have to change, you have to change with the times, you have to, and they did not adapt. That would, that's what killed this company. So Darwin was right that this company, they may have had a head start, but they didn't adapt, didn't keep up with the competition. McDonald's just raced off, and so did Burger King. And, you know, I mean... It was also a, uh, uh, it says there was a uh, <coughs> controversy involving horse meat. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, what? Know, you get a controversy, whether it's true or not, you get that going, might be the kiss of death. You, all you need to do is say that one time and you're... you're and you're dead. <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, another, uh, uh, this is a kind of a try, an attempt to be a popular name called Pop and Taco. Yeah. I guess meaning a, uh, uh, a Coke and a Coke and a Taco. I guess so. Yeah. You know, you uh, could get, you could, it says you could get, I have no idea who these people are. Again, they were in California, of course. Uh, it was, uh, this was Cal, uh, regional. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you could get tacos, hamburgers, hot dogs, pastrami sandwiches. Gee, you know. <laughs> to me, they, they got lost. What are they? Yeah. A hot dog does not go in a taco. A hamburger, although hamburger can go into a taco and does, pastrami and a taco, I mean, they, they had no special place in the marketplace, in my opinion. You can't get away with this. You say, if you were... It's, uh, you, you get stuck in the middle, it's called. You don't have a, mm -hmm. a focused differentiator that something specific of what you're doing. You know what? That's what's happened to Sears. Sears. What is Sears now? I mean, they, they had too many different products and yeah. different companies picked off whatever Sears was doing. You had BJ's taking appliance from them. You had Macy's taking clothes from them. You know, you had, uh, I mean, the internet what is taking Sears? Everything. The internet hurting everybody. <laughs> Jeff Bezos you know, they, taking care of everything. Jeff Bezos is, you know, taking care of <laughs> We won't go there with Jeff Bezos. Now, here was one uh, <laughs> differentiation, though, Coach. It was called D-Lights. D apostrophe L I T E S D lights. Yeah. Uh, an unusual tactic for fast food. They were selling on nutritional value. How yeah. do you like that? What's yeah, low calorie that? Uh, hamburgers and buns, and you know, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, 
nobody really cares. Right? Hundred plus locations. I success mean. was <coughs> success was fleeting. Like, yeah, well, yeah, right? yeah, because it went you by know, like a fast truck. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna make they're gonna give you food with great nutritional value. Great, that's Weight Watchers bag, not you know. Sold out to Hardee's. Yeah, Hardee's yeah. was a uh, talk about uh, focus. Right? That was uh, instead of uh, hot dogs, hamburgers. It was uh, beef, roast beef, right? Exactly, how it is roast beef. Yep. Beef. At right. least they had, you know, they had something going for yeah. them. But, you know, I mean, let's face it. Uh, these chains that want to broadly attack people from the standpoint, get healthy, <laughs> I got to tell you something. The, well, the average American is, what, 20 pounds overweight or something like would that? that? Be have, would that have uh, a greater bounce in the market today than, uh, today than it did, you know, back in... Uh, 1985. I think it would have a little bit better uh, uh, there's appeal. More, there's a lot more uh, buzz, you know, about, about getting about healthy, healthy and staying healthy. Days. Yeah, it might. It may, may, maybe they'll make a uh, make a comeback. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> I'm gonna s switch you on. This was a this was a biggie in its day. Yeah. A and W. Yeah. Drivens coach. It's ancient. A one and of, w. One of the oldest, right? Yeah. What? Um, that was uh, uh, synonymous with. Uh, Draft, draft root beer and root beer floats. Right. You know what a you know what a root a beer, root beer float. float. It's ice cream and a root beer. Yeah. Right. That's A and W. And frosty mugs. Right. That must have gone over big in the summer, right? Yeah, not too big in the winter though. <laughs> <laughs> but this went back to my <coughs> God, my God, this goes back to 1919. That's right. Yeah, this is an old chain, and it's making a comeback too. Yeah, it's maybe coming back. Yeah, well, again, that's uh, all. That uh, all revolves around the leadership and the commitment of leadership to growing a Class A leadership team, uh -huh. taking this once powerful brand that that hit rough times, probably because it was treated as a cash cow, and now it's been maybe sold to a group of people who want to redevelop the brand because it's still something that's redevelopable. Uh, but what I want to mention, you know, I think I think uh, no doubt that uh, A and W. They took advantage of the, autom <coughs> the automobile. Again, they did the same uh, thing back in 19, 19, 20, and it 30. Was, it was uh, kids, but this was the thing. It's uh, our so in uh, American society. It was uh, not the parents. It was kids having cars. Right. And driving and cruising around. And going to an A and pulling and pull up. And into an A&W. And you had the car hops come out. In roller, they have roller uh, skates? I guess I've Who seen would? it. It was before my time. <laughs> Liar, liar, <laughs> but yeah, no, the roller skate, you know, the, the girl comes out and roller skates, takes your order, goes back, you know. But riding, I think, <coughs> riding on a, on, a, uh, on a social wave, which is that yeah. uh, the popularity of the automobile, the availability, everybody had an automobile and could ride around, uh, 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 convertibles. Yeah, right. Those, those, uh, those were happy days, and of course you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. When Richie would pull up in the yeah. car to when Arnold's, right? Yeah. Why, why did that? Why did that go away? I wonder. I guess it was liability issues with somebody skating around trying to serve. There is a chain. I think Sonic, up in New uh, Hampshire, has uh, those pull up, and you can order something, and then somebody comes out, brings your yeah. stuff. They don't come out roller skates, but they bring your food out to you. At least you don't have to they stand in the window. Skis. <laughs> yeah, right. <coughs> I thought that was funny. Okay, I'm going to turn your attention to uh, 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 a chain known as Carol's. Yep. More more burgers, by the way. Yeah. We're getting sick of burgers here. I know. Everybody has an idea. Come up. But with it a was new it was it was preceded. <coughs> this this preceded uh, McDonald's and Burger, yep. Burger King. Yeah, they actually came out. Uh, one of the first that came out, and uh, you know, you the same type of uh, idea that was a fifteen cent. That's unbelievable. Fifteen cent hamburger, and you walked up to the window, ordered it. It was already. They popped it in your plate, and you walked away with it. Yeah. And, went off to your car and ate or, you know, whatever you did. But again, uh, they didn't keep up, and a lot of them became Burger Kings. I'm sure the, the franchisees just said, Carol's isn't supporting, you know, what we need in today's current market and, and ke keeping the brand fresh and current. And so, again, oligopolistic competition set in. You got McDonald's, you got Burger Kings. And then you did have Wendy's trying to make an inroad, and it has to some degree. But yeah. McDonald's and Burger King are two biggies. But so these guys uh, <coughs> party caved into uh, 
caved into the Burger King and, and McDonald's. They didn't keep sure. up. They didn't invest in the company, and you know they went by the wayside. Uh, this next one, I think, is uh, is this a uh, regional called Wetson's? W e t s o n Wetson. Yeah. Because uh, well, the the founder is Herb Wetson. Wetson, yeah. Yeah, uh, but he called it Wet Wetson's yep. founder of Wetson. <coughs> um, this guy was no, no he's not uh, he's not from California. He was inspired by the by uh, the uh, the uh, success of McDonald's uh, out on the West Coast. Yeah. He opened this thing in Long Island on the East Coast. Right. As Ray Kroc also did. had the fifteen cent hamburgers. Right. So he he was a me too, and yeah, you know, I guess he was fairly successful for a short period of time. But only about 10 years because he did not support it financially. He didn't put the people yeah. together to continue to build a chain. Ray Kroc did just the opposite thing. Ray Kroc, he was from the Midwest, Chicago, Illinois, Des Plaines, Illinois. Yeah. But he happened to be in California, saw the two McDonald's operating very well, and opened up franchise McDonald's in the Midwest and continued to grow the brand. He was a very powerful business personality and wasn't uh, Cro uh, Ray Kroc was a uh, traveling salesman. <coughs> exactly he, he was, was selling California. blenders or something uh, yeah. but he saw that this is a great thing and he took it and of course he created and crushed all the competition and Herb Wetson just didn't keep up and uh, uh, speaking of change of pace uh, 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 the next one is racks roast beef I wouldn't eat an any. It sounds too much like rats to me. I wouldn't eat a rax roast R beef. That's for sure. I don't know what. That and is again, for. they 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 diluted the brand identity by calling it Jack's roast beef J A X, and then Rick's roast beef R I X, and then you yeah. know, I mean, just who the heck are they? You know, uh, McDonald's is McDonald's. If I say to you McDonald's, you immediately think of hamburger, right? Yeah. yeah. If I say to you uh, Amazon, you don't think of the river anymore. If I ask my students what's Amazon, they immediately say someplace they can go buy anything they want. Do you know what's a big river in, in uh, South America? Oh, it is? <laughs> yeah, really. This uh, Rex, uh, it was a, uh, a mismanagement item. Mixed, they just don't know what they're doing. It's a class C team, if not a class B team. To come up with that, diff that many different names, Rax doesn't work to start with, and of course they probably realized it. They want to make it Rick's, R-A-X, and Jack's, J-A-X, and it just confused the heck out of the market, and the market said, no thank you, go away. Well, there's a couple still left out there, <laughs> but they, they certainly got uh, buried by uh, Hardee's, which was uh, featured, you know, roast beef. Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, now here's what here's an interesting one. Uh, Claudia Sanders. <laughs> that won't the Colonel. That won't mean a lot to to uh, <coughs> to some of our viewers, but that was a. Uh, uh, this is called the franchise that never was. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. But it was it it did involve uh, the founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Right, Colonel, Colonel, Sanders. Colonel Sanders started K KFC. You know his story that mm -hmm. he had a very successful uh, sit down. French uh, sit-down restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. And the highway bypassed him, and his business just, you know, went went away. And then he went around selling franchises, worked very hard to build the franchise. Eventually, in a very short time, for very short money, sold the the name, the brand. Uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken was the yep. brand then. Of course, yep. they changed it back when. KFC became the brand because fried be, had a bad reputation uh -huh. when people were concer concerned about fried foods. Uh -huh. So they went from Kentucky Fried Chicken to KFC. But what he did, he just became the spokesperson and the white-haired guy in, yeah. the, in the suit. And uh, But I guess he became a little disgruntled and decided to start this his, in his wife's name a sit-down, kind of like what he had before he yeah. started the franchise thing, but it, it never worked. He didn't have the money to back it. He didn't have, quite frankly, the business. Uh, he, I don't think, with all due respect to Colonel Sanders, he could have built Kentucky Fried Chicken into what the governor, he sold it to the governor of Missouri or Kentucky. Kentucky, uh, yeah. yeah. And, they and, made him a colonel. And ma yeah, honorary well, they made colonel. him, a, he's an honorary colonel, but they, he sold, and though that Class A team built the Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise, it wasn't mm. the colonel that actually built it into thousands of restaurants all over the country. 
that's a class A team taking something from somebody who took it to a certain point but couldn't take it any further. And by virtue of the fact that Claudia Sanders never got any place, he didn't have the horses to, to take this well, thing Well, I said further. he started up, he, he wanted to, <coughs> he'd already sold off his brand. Right. Now he wants to start again as Claudia, right. Sanders, which is his wife. Yeah. The colonel's lady. Yes. And consider, but then the, uh, here comes a lawsuit. Yeah. The oligopoly. Yeah. Cr comes in. The non, the non-compete comes in, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> the and settlement allowed for only one location yep. in Shelbyville. Right. <laughs> and he could not franchise it. And, you know, that was it. I mean, he, you know, they had, they had tied him up as, and that recipe had to be KFC alone. Well, now it's KFC. For the last 20 years, it's been called KFC. Yeah. <coughs> it's like uh, IBM. I'll ask people, what's IBM stand for? They don't know. They have a clue, yeah. They haven't got a clue. International business International machine. Business it's IBM machine. now as a brand, so it's KFC. Uh, <coughs> uh, what, next one I want to ask you about is uh, is Red Barn. Yep. Uh, <coughs> it was back. Uh, uh, it was a uh, it was a franchise. It was known for that barn uh, that barn style oh, architecture. Barn that's, building, a, right. uh, that's a that's uh, a the <coughs> uh, part of brand image. Yep. Architecture. And Big Barney Burgers, this is Burgers, Yep. had uh, between three and 400 yeah, in 1906, well. so it got, it, it got quite far down the road. Well, in Canada, in, and even in, in Australia, right. Yeah, or even Australia. As well. <coughs> but, of uh, course, corporate ownership, as it says, withdrew support, yeah. decided to treat it as a cash cow, there you not go. pour any investment back into the company. Uh, get a big ROI on their original investment, and uh, it died a slow death to the point now where now there's only one. Oh, not not totally dead, Coach. There's still there's, one there's, in Racine. Racine, Wisconsin, yeah. the only one left. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, here's a uh, here's a uh, this next one is a chicken joint, Coach. Pioneer <laughs> Pioneer Chicken. Yeah, this is a goodie. I like this one. Talk about chicken. <coughs> California, right? Cal another uh, West Coast. Why do you all these startups on the West Coast? Ah, uh, you know, uh, they're very. Uh, they had as many as two hundred pioneers. Had as many as two hundred seventy stores. Yeah. Yep. Uh, now this is uh, this was advertised by uh, uh, sports heroes Chick Hearn. Ch Chick Hearn. He was an announcer. He wasn't a player. He was an, a TV announcer. Okay. Sportscaster. And O.J. Simpson. Yeah, he was a football player, among other things, as a matter of fact. But it says pre-trial. Uh, pre <laughs> Did that kill it or what? Uh, the minute O.J.? <laughs> I mean, they, they won't, they, USC doesn't even want to have his name on the building. They took his Heisman trophies out of there. Oh, yeah? You know? I yeah. mean, they're trying to distance themselves from O.J. Simpson. <laughs> uh, you know, if O.J. Simpson brand on Pioneer Chicken was an advantage yeah. prior to whenever, you know, he pulled his stunt... You know, I mean, after that, you could kiss the brand goodbye. <coughs> uh, and, uh, Coach, this is the last one I'm going to ask you about. This is uh, called Sandy's. Yep. S-A-N-D-Y apostrophe S, Sandy's. Yep. Uh, more burgers. Yep. This, uh, went, this goes all the way back to the 1960s. Uh, this was, but this one involved unhappy McDonald's franchise owners. How right. do you like that one? Yeah, because the McDonald's was leasing the franchise and the, the terms of the McDonald's were and still are to some degree very strict and these people decided that they could do it better. So pretty quick, I mean this says when? Back in the 60s. back in the 60s, because yeah. McDonald's only been around since the 40s or late 40s, 50s, something like that. Was. So these people pretty much said, I'm sick of McDonald's franchises, probably sold their McDonald's franchises and decided to come out with a Me Too business. Yeah. And I keep telling people, if you don't do something different, I mean, how do you differentiate your business? If it's another Me Too business, it's doomed for failure. I don't care how many suckers you sell the franchise brand to, I don't care how well you promote it, how cheap you let people into it, it's doomed to failure, it's going to fail financially eventually because it's just nothing special about it and the McDonald's proliferate and the Burger Kings proliferate and even the Wendy's started because you know the guy Dave who started Wendy's, he, he, were, he learned 
the, the chain mentality from running Kentucky Fried Chickens. He wasn't in the hamburger business. He didn't own them, but he did work in them and he managed them. He says, you know what? I know a way to differentiate my Wendy's burger besides the red-headed Wendy, you know? Yeah. That's how I'm going to make a square burger. It was, you know, it's not much, but it was different. That was his daughter. <clears throat> well, that's his daughter, Wendy. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, with all due respect, uh, with Dave Thomas passed away, and he was a great front man because he was so humble, and yeah. they did so many good ads. And the I think he had good presence, you know. He had a know. great presence, TV presence. Of course, when he passed away, they didn't have an icon, and they tried right. to use his daughter, but it didn't work. Yeah, that, that was a flop. Well, but also the, it was uh, a flop because she's a big girl. I'll tell you, you right now. You've reminded <laughs> Sorry. me. Sorry. <laughs> you've reminded me. It's, you know what? I, I was going <coughs> to comment that, uh, the same thing is, uh, to me is a little bit true with the KFC, the Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah. Thing, with, they, they use the colonel yeah. with his, you know, his beard and his white Very shirt. Very distinct look. But lately now, and currently on TV, they've been flopping one actor after another trying to find, trying one to get clicks. the right click right. on that symbol, and it ain't working. It ain't working at all. And how about no. the beer? Not that it's part of this, and it's, it's, it's the, that beer that had the, the most interesting man in the world. Yeah. You know, they, his contract oh, ran yeah. out. He couldn't renegotiate it or want to retire. And so now they're doing all kinds of other things trying to do it and, and, and you know, get the brand backed up. They had him as a front man, their sales tripled or quadrupled yeah. with him as a front man on yeah. TV, talk about front of the mind. Yeah. And then the minute he left the ads, they're doing other stupid so things and the brand is, it's still there, but its sales are off by like 60%. Whoa. Uh, <clears throat> this Sandy's that I'm asking you about was the uh, disgruntled, uh, disgruntled McDonald's piece. So they yep. didn't have to, the the uh, they they would uh, retain ownership of the store. Yeah. Uh, not lease from right. McDonald's. Exactly. That's what they did. Not like. forced to buy McDonald's supplies. Right. And they, that, that seemed like a, a good idea. Seems like a good idea, but it was probably not a Class A team that was trying to fund and run and build the company. It takes but money. Ego. 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 Thank you for watching. Uh, this is the Fox Robbins Business Show. Uh, <coughs> this is episode two of two episodes on um, uh, do you remember these defunct chains? Uh, so there's, there's, a, there's a big graveyard out there. Oh, yeah. And uh, feel free to go. All of the uh, Fox Robbins episodes are uploaded to uh, YouTube for convenience sake. And so uh, uh, when you have a chance, go to YouTube. At the top, just type in a single word, Fox Robbins, F-O-X-R-O-B-B-I-N-S, and uh, click and voila. There's a library, and you can sort through and pick uh, any episode that uh, is of current interest and, uh, and watch it at, at your uh, convenience. So, and we will uh, come back again. We will see you guys next time. <laughs>